Good morning. Today, we're going through Genesis 5, which on its surface might not seem like a super exciting passage, but the amazing thing about scripture is when you start to dig in, you really start to see some cool things. I'm actually kind of excited about this passage. Um, chapter 5 of Genesis. Adam's descendants to Noah. Let's pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. We're so thankful for this last weekend where we were able to celebrate um, your son risen from the grave, changing everything, God. Um, and in this passage, God, we thank you that we get to see some foreshadowing of the benefits that we get from his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. Please be with us as we dig into your word. We can't hope to understand this without you and your Holy Spirit illuminating, illuminating this text to us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get started here. We've got um, Genesis 5. This is the book of generations of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them and named them man when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness, after his image, and named him Seth. And the days of Adam, after he fathered Seth, were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he fathered Enosh. Seth lived after he fathered Enosh 807 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he fathered Kenan. Enosh lived after he fathered Kenan 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. When Kenan had lived 70 years, he fathered Mahalalel. Kenan lived after he fathered Mahalalel 840 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Kenan were 910 years, and he died. When Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he fathered Jared. Mahalalel lived after he fathered Jared 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died. When Jared had lived 162 years, he fathered Enoch. Jared lived after he fathered Enoch 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he fathered Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he fathered Lamech. Methuselah lived after he fathered Lamech 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. When Lamech had lived 182 years, he fathered a son and called his name Noah, saying, Out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. Lamech lived after he fathered Noah 595 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. After Noah was 500 years old, Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, so what can we observe in this text? Like I said up front, it's, it's a text that on its surface seems uh, it's just a genealogy. Sometimes genealogies seem a little bit dry, right? But there's some things that we definitely see here. So first of all, I notice 
right off the bat it says that God made Adam in his likeness. He was made in the likeness of God. And then it, it immediately goes on to say um, that he made male and female, um, created them. So in his likeness, male and female are created, I think. Um, he blessed them with the name of man. And then it says that Adam fathered a son in his likeness. Uh, and it goes on and says about many people that they lived, had other sons and daughters, and they died. And it's tying generation to generation to generation. That they live, have children, and die. There's one unique example that we observe. Enoch, he was unique in this genealogy, that he walked with God and was not. Um, the implication that he did not die. So, very some basic, easy observations here, and what can we draw from these observations? So what do we take away? Passages like this, I think, they remind us that the Bible um, is not fairy tales. This is actually historical. They're tying generation to generation, and these are generations that people would have been able to, to trace back. It's important. Trace back all the way to Adam being made in the likeness of God. It ties the present to the past. And when we can tie the present to the past, all the way back to Adam, who was made in the likeness of God, we are reminded that we are image bearers of God. All of us, tied all the way back to Adam, are image bearers of God. And that's amazing. It gives every single person on this planet an inherent value because we bear God's image from the womb to the grave, we bear God's image and we have an incredible value just because of that. However, it also reminds us in that it says, died, died, died. It's the overwhelming theme of this passage is that everyone died, everyone stopped living, right? With one exception. Everyone dies. We are all also tied to the curse. We all die. We bear the curse. We're all tied to Adam that way as well. And then the exception being Enoch, which is an important exception. Um, he, he walked with God and was not, for God took him. There are a lot of kind of cool implications you can think of with this. I mean, for, for the writer to know this, it means that he probably, I think, was taken in front of people. Otherwise, if he just disappeared while he was alone, then perhaps they would have just thought he had been killed somewhere and they couldn't find his body. I mean, we don't really know, but it's kind of interesting to think that perhaps people saw him taken up, that, that God took him. But beyond that, I think... It's really, it's cool to think of this, this man walking with God in such a personal way. Um, if you look at this, every, every generation, it says, um, lived after he fathered, right? 800 years or so, whatever, and had other sons and daughters, thus all the days, and he died. With Enoch, it says, Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah. So in place of lived, it places walked with God. It's kind of cool. Um, it's like life amplified. He walked with God. 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Because the passage here for, for Enoch is very similar. Um, as to all the others. It's just two key differences. In place of lived, it puts walked with God. True life, really, if you think about it. And in place of died, 
it, it says, and was not, for God took him. So that amplified life of walking with God ended not with death, but with God taking him. And the reality is that God takes all of us. Um, we don't live forever. If, if God had not taken Enoch, he would have died and, um, and would have ended. But his, his incredible walk with God, his life, ended differently because he was so close with God. Um, and, and so um, he didn't just live, right? He lived amplified. He lived walking with God. Spurgeon has this uh, really cool quote. Um, he says, Enoch's life has no adventures. Right? There's nothing especially noteworthy in the, in the passage about him. It doesn't go on and on about him. But the fact that it says that he walked with God. So he, Spurgeon says, Enoch's life has no adventures. Is it not event, adventure enough for a man to walk with God? What ambition can crave a nobler existence than abiding in fellowship with the eternal? That's life amplified, right? He didn't just live, he walked with God. He didn't die, God took him. So, I mean, that, it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing this thought of being able to walk with God walking parallel to God, walking in faith with him, walking in his will. You can't walk with God and be contrary to God. And what we see is this foreshadowing of the promise of Christ, right? That you can live in faith with God. God cannot abide sin, and it's only through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, which we celebrated this last weekend, that we, we can have communion with God. So Enoch was walking in in Christ's work before Christ did it. He was looking forward in faith. In Jude, um, the book of Jude, Enoch is cited as being a, um, a prophet. Um, and, and so I think the encouragement for us here I mean, is that first, and this may not seem like encouragement, but the overwhelming emphasis in chapter five here is death, that everyone dies. Everyone stops living on earth at some point. Um, primarily, it causes death. Right? Enoch is very unique in not having died. Um, but I think the lesson here is that if we walk in God's will, if we walk with God, our, our walks with him become deeper and, and he becomes more familiar with, to us. Um, We'll walk further and further with him. Okay? We'll, we'll range further from our earthly homes. Okay, this, this idea that we're going on these, these long walks with God and each walk we go a little further with him, a little further with him until someday on our final walk with him, we're so far from our earthly home that God looks at us and just says, you know what, why don't you just stay at my place now? Um, just, just stay the night with me and you can, you can stay with me from now on. Um, I think that's incredibly encouraging and I think it's a, it's a wonderful way to think of not only um, death, um, our final walk with God, ending with us staying with him, but also of life. It's a wonderful way to live, walking with God day after day. Anyway, I'll just leave you with that. Thanks again for a great Easter. It was great to see the views on our, on our live stream. Hopefully you had a wonderful Easter, and hopefully this week will be, um, be wonderful as well. I know this is uh, trying time for a lot of us. Um, it gets lonely, and I understand that a lot of you um, are just aching for community again, as I am as well. Um, commune with God. Um, walk with God. No deeper friendship will you ever know. Um, 
and it's one that will last eternally. So let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much that you walk with us. Thank you that you've given us a way to know you through your scripture. Thank you that you reveal yourself to us in so many ways. Pray, God, that we can humble ourselves, um, direct our paths, God. Help us to walk with you further and further until someday we just, we just stay with you, God. We thank you for your son. We thank you for Easter. We pray that you will bless today and help us do your will and love the people around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, guys.